A seismic rupture off the coast of Japan released a magnitude 7.6 earthquake, and within one hour Mount Mayan in the Philippines began to display a rapid escalation of volcanic activity. How might a powerful tremor far away interact with a volcano already simmering within the crust? The Pacific margins, where Japan and the Philippines sit, are stitched together by convergent plate boundaries and subduction zones. In such settings, oceanic plates dive beneath continental or arc plates. Waters and volatile-rich sediments are driven into the upper mantle, and partial melting generates the magmas that feed volcanic arcs. Earthquakes are a routine expression of stress release along faults and megathrusts in this environment. Volcanic eruptions are the surface expression of deeper magmatic processes. Both are governed by the same broad language of stress, pressure, and material properties, and at times they can speak to one another across surprising distances. When a large earthquake ruptures, it liberates energy in two broad ways. First, it changes the static stress field in the crust, permanent shifts in the balance of forces that can render certain faults or pockets of rock more or less stable. Second, it launches dynamic stresses in the form of seismic waves that travel outward like ripples from a stone dropped in water. Static stress changes are most consequential close to the rupture and decay with distance. Dynamic stresses, by contrast, propagate widely and can be detected thousands of kilometers away as coherent oscillations of the ground. For a seismic event the size of magnitude 7.6, long period surface waves are particularly important. They carry appreciable energy over broad regions and impose gentle but sustained oscillations that can interact with fluids and partially molten rock. Beneath Mount Mayon sits a plumbing system that has evolved over centuries of eruptive cycles. The broad outline of that system includes a deep source of melt that ascends and periodically accumulates in mid-crustal storage zones, a relatively shallow reservoir beneath the volcanic cone, and a conduit that connects the reservoir to the summit. The geometry and connectivity of these components control how pressure is built and released. Magma produced in subduction settings commonly carries dissolved volatiles, water, carbon dioxide, sulfur species that lower the density of the melt and generate internal pressure as they exsolve during ascent. In the uppermost reservoir, crystal content tends to increase creating a slushy, foam-bearing magma that responds to changes in pressure with rapid shifts in buoyancy and viscosity. If a shallow reservoir is already pressurized and the conduit is partially obstructed by a solidified plug or a growing dome, the system teeters on a threshold. Small perturbations can have outsized effects. Dynamic seismic waves arriving from a distant quake can impose transient pressure changes in the magma and adjacent rock. A short-lived reduction in confining pressure can allow gas bubbles to expand. An increase in shear stress can promote the growth of microfractures in the conduit walls. Vertical ground oscillation can induce sloshing inside the reservoir. These processes are intimately linked. Gas exsolution increases buoyancy, which drives faster ascent of magma. Faster ascent promotes more vigorous gas exsolution. And the vicus coupling between crystals, melt and gas phases controls whether the response is gradual or explosive. Several specific mechanisms translate passing seismic waves into eruptive behavior. First, a process known as bubble nucleation and growth can be highly sensitive to pressure changes. Magma near gas saturation holds volatiles in solution. Even modest decreases in pressure enable tiny bubbles to nucleate and grow. 
If seismic waves produce a rapid pressure oscillation of sufficient amplitude or duration, the nucleation rate increases and bubbles can coalesce, reducing effective magma density and accelerating ascent. Second, ground shaking can mechanically destabilize a summit dome or plug. Lava domes are often poorly welded piles of viscous lava. They fracture and spall under small stresses. If an outer block collapses, it transiently vents the reservoir, causing decompression and violent degassing. Third, dynamic shaking can alter permeability at the margins of the magma chamber and within the surrounding hydrothermal system. Changes in permeability govern the migration of fluids. A sudden opening of pathways can route pressurized gas or hot water into the conduit, amplifying eruptive potential. Hydrothermal systems exert an additional influence that can be decisive. Groundwater percolates into fractured rock and sits in exchange with hot wall rocks and shallow magmas. When seismic waves pass, they can induce rapid fluid pressure transients. Water can be squeezed through narrow fractures, flash to steam where heat gradients are steep, or abruptly evacuate pore spaces. Rapid steam generation produces overpressures that can be transmitted into the magma column or cause phreatic explosions at the surface. Such steam-driven blasts are notoriously unpredictable and can precede or accompany magmatic eruptions. In short, a volcano is not a closed container. It is coupled to an active hydrosphere that is itself responsive to distant shaking. The earthquake generates long-period surface waves that reach the Bicol Peninsula as sustained low-frequency oscillations. The waves rhythmically stress the edifice and the shallow reservoir, producing small amplitude pressure fluctuations within the magma and the surrounding porous rock. At the same time, a shallow dome or plug that was already progressively weakening under internal pressure succumbs to microcracking and partial collapse under the imposed shaking. The collapse provides a sudden pathway for gas-charged magma to decompress, resulting in rapid bubble growth, accelerated ascent, and explosive fragmentation. Concurrently, hydrothermal fluids flash and inject steam into near-surface fractures, amplifying pressure transients. The upshot is a multifaceted response that begins as enhanced rockfall and dome spalling, evolves to ash emission, and short-lived explosive bursts, and in some cases can transition into more sustained eruptive phases. This synoptic description is intentionally general because volcanic responses are highly dependent on local conditions. Conduit geometry, magma composition, crystal content, volatile load, hydrothermal connectivity, and pre-existing fracture networks. For a mountain like Mayon, Characterized by frequent activity and a steep symmetrical cone, these conditions often favor rapid, high-energy events when the system tips. The volcano has a long history of generating fast-moving pyroclastic flows, ephemeral lava domes, and ballistic ejections of incandescent blocks. Even small changes in the shallow system can produce dangerous outcomes because the steep slopes accelerate the descent of hot debris and loose fragments. A number of historical analogues illustrate how distant seismic energy can modulate volcanic behavior without a simple one-to-one -one cause and effect recipe. In several documented cases, large earthquakes were followed by enhanced tremor, increased gas emission or renewed geyser activity at distant volcanic and geothermal sites. Sometimes a lag of hours to days separates the quake and subsequent volcanic response. In other cases, the response appears within a few minutes. The variability arises because volcanoes respond to a complex combination of static changes in stress, transient dynamic shaking and the internal state of the magmatic system. 
Where a volcano is already pressurized and perched close to eruption, even a transient, dynamic nudge may be sufficient to change the timing of an event that would otherwise have occurred later. Two key distinctions clarify how external forces translate to eruption timing. Static stress changes alter the long-term balance of forces and can load or unload faults and magma pathways over weeks to months. They are most effective at short ranges. Dynamic stresses conversely act on shorter timescales and can be effective at greater distances because they couple to the elastic and fluid dynamics of the crust. When the magma is mobile and gas-saturated, the dynamic mechanism is particularly potent. Bubble growth and migration respond quickly to oscillating pressures. The net effect is that dynamic stress is a plausible candidate for explaining rapid responses at volcanoes far from an earthquake, so long as the volcanic system is already near a critical state. It is also important to place the volcanic response in the context of Mayan's eruptive style. Mayan commonly transitions through phases that begin with non-explosive lava extrusion and degassing proceed to moderate strombolian explosions and ash emission, and in more severe cases produce high-energy Plinian explosions and pyroclastic density currents. Dome growth and destruction are recurrent themes. Because the volcano's magmas contain sufficient silica to increase viscosity while remaining fluid enough to ascend, they create conditions favourable for both effusive and explosive behaviour, often in short succession. The steep flanks facilitate the rapid downslope movement of fragmented material, making pyroclastic surges and lahars particularly hazardous even during relatively small eruptive episodes. The hazards that would be expected in the immediate aftermath of a dome disruption or shallow eruption include ballistic projectiles ejected from the vent, ash-laden plumes capable of reducing visibility and disrupting aircraft, hot avalanches of pyroclastic material that can travel many kilometres and bury landscapes, and destabilisation of slopes that, in the presence of heavy rain, produce lahars fast-flowing volcanic mud flows that travel along drainage channels. These processes are driven by the physics of high-temperature gas-solid mixtures and gravity. They are largely insensitive to whether a distant earthquake played a role in timing. In short, once a volcanic system responds, the physical hazards unfold according to local geometry and the intensity of the eruption. While the conditions presents a physically consistent mechanism by which distant seismic waves may influence a volcano like Mayon, alternative explanations must be acknowledged. Volcanoes have intrinsic tempos. Magma ascent, conduit evolution and gas pressurization often operate on timescales of days to months. It is plausible that the eruption sequence simply represented the natural culmination of a period of increasing unrest that was bound to culminate irrespective of a distant quake. The concurrence of events in time may therefore be coincidental. Distinguishing between coincidence and causation requires careful analysis of pre-event monitoring data. Trends in shallow seismicity, ground deformation, gas compositions, and thermal anomalies. High-resolution seismograms that record volcanic tremor and long-period events at the time of the passing seismic waves can provide critical clues about whether the volcano experienced a clear response synchronized with the external waves. From an observational standpoint, signatures that strengthen the case for an influence of distant waves include abrupt changes in volcanic tremor, coincident with the arrival of long-period waves, sudden spikes in gas release, or a clear temporal correlation between dome fracturing and the passing of seismic energy. Conversely, a gradual escalation of unrest, unlinked in timing to the waves, supports an endogenous explanation. 
Because volcanic systems are noisy and stochastic, multiple lines of evidence are usually required to build confidence in any causal claim. The tectonic backdrop also offers interpretive nuance. Japan and the Philippines are part of a larger plate boundary network in the Western Pacific. Stress is continuously redistributed across plates via subduction and transform motions. A major rupture in one segment of the system can, in principle, alter the stress field at regional scales. However, the magnitude of that change attenuates rapidly with distance. Thus, for static stress transfer to be a primary driver at distances of thousands of kilometers would require an extraordinary set of circumstances. Dynamic stress transmission is the more likely conduit for rapid interactions across the basin, but even then the effect depends on the volcano's readiness to respond. In contemplating the broader meaning of such events, it is useful to remember that the Earth is a coupled system of solids, liquids and gases, and that energy injected in one place often finds many pathways for dissipation. Large earthquakes and volcanic eruptions are both expressions of energy release, and while they typically occur independently, they can occasionally synchronize in ways that are revealing about subsurface connectivity. The occurrence of seismic waves capable of perturbing shallow magmatic systems underscores how sensitive those systems can be when they sit near instability thresholds. It is the juxtaposition of internal readiness and external forcing that shapes outcomes. Viewed from a geological perspective, the sequence is instructive. It teaches that the Earth's dynamic elements, plates, faults, magmas, and hydrothermal systems do not operate in isolation. They are parts of an integrated whole, occasionally synchronized in ways that reveal deep coupling. Whether the passing seismic waves from a Japanese earthquake simply nudged a volcano that was already about to act, or whether they played an essential role in triggering the event, the deeper lesson is the same. Volcanic systems can be exquisitely sensitive to transient perturbations, and understanding their behavior demands continuous, multi-parameter monitoring and careful interpretation. Finally, the drama of a single volcano echoing the energy released across the ocean invites humility. The rules governing the Earth's inner workings are accessible to human inquiry, but not always predictable in their timing. The sequence linking a major tremor and a volcanic response is an occasion to appreciate the subtle choreography of stress, pressure, and material response that sustains the planet's restlessness. For those who study volcanoes, it is an occasion to sharpen instruments, refine models, and seek the data that can convert plausible pathways into robust explanations. For those who observe from a distance, it is a reminder that geological processes unfold on interconnected scales, and that the Earth story is continuously being written in vibrations, flows, and eruptions. If you found this breakdown valuable, please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to tap that hype icon. Your support helps this video reach a wider audience and keeps more people informed about what's happening beneath our feet.